to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 620. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I'm still getting over all of the food that I ate. How about you? Now, today's show is going to be a continuation of a fact or fiction episode that we brought you. It would be, what, six six weeks ago? Yeah, six weeks ago. So it's a fun look at dental facts and myths, all right? Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. All right, so you can go there and you could look up the previous Factor Fiction episode, which happened to be episode number 614, okay? And I want to remind people that in 10 minutes or approximately 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business on Tuesday afternoon, so just listen a little bit. You won't have to. The, the questions don't tax you. They're, they're usually pretty easy. So it winds up being just a contest to who can call in first or um, who gets picked when we have the four callers on hold. All right. So as I said, fact or fiction, bringing you a fun look at dental facts and myths. This would be considered part two. So let's go to the first one. The first one would be fact or fiction. You can't drive yourself home from a dental appointment if you've had oral sedation. Is that fact or is that fiction? Think about it. I mean, people take sedatives all the time. Xanax, you've probably heard of that. They take um, Ambien for various sleeping disorders, and they get up and go to work. I'm thinking, although I don't know what the doctors say on that. So fact or fiction, you can't drive yourself home from a dental appointment if you have had oral sedation. Honestly, that is fact. You cannot drive yourself home. Okay, there's a rule put out by the dental board, state dental board, that if you have had oral sedation, I am supposed to try to ensure that you don't drive your car until after one sleep cycle. So even if you have an early morning appointment, you have to wait until the next day to drive your car per our instructions, per state dental board instructions, I guess I can't like follow you home and um, check on you, but you definitely don't want to drive your car. I'm not encouraging anybody to cheat. I just want you to know that um, you have to be on your best behavior and not cheat, okay? So to reiterate, it is a fact that you can't drive yourself home from a dental appointment if you have had oral sedation. Okay, so let's go to the next one. The next one is fact or fiction. All denture wearers need to use an adhesive to keep them in. All denture wearers need to use an adhesive to keep them in. We see those commercials on TV, right? Polygrip, Polydent, uh, Efferdent, Eff- all that uh, you know, all that stuff, right? The C bond, and it would make you think that everybody has to wear that. Is this fact or fiction? It is fiction. Nobody should be using those materials. The only, well, let me just qualify that. The only time you should need adhesive is when you have the teeth extracted and the initial denture put in on an immediate basis. We call those immediate dentures. So you come in, we've pre-impressed your teeth, we've taken impressions, we've sent it to the lab. The lab makes us a set of teeth based on your natural teeth from your model with when you're, the remaining teeth that were on it. And then when you come in... We numb you, sedate you if you're going to be sedated. We remove all of the remaining teeth and we place the dentures in immediately. 
right then. You leave with teeth. But the problem with that is you're immediately going to start to shrink. The tissues, the gums, the bone underneath are going to shrink. And so within one day, those dentures are loose. And by the end of the week, they're even more loose. And by the end of the next several weeks, they're even more loose because you're healing. When gums and bone heal, they shrink. So there creates a, that creates a space underneath, the, uh, underneath your gums, between the gums and the plastic. So in that instance, and just for that instance alone, you need to have those adhesives. But once you're healed, and we do our reline impression, which is now an impression of your healed gums and bone, you should not use or should not need the, um, the adhesives, okay? So the answer to that is that it's fiction, but a better way of putting it would be no one needs those adhesives. And if you're using them, if you, if you are using them, you probably need a reline of your dentures or you need completely new dentures, okay? And, and keep in mind that if you, um, if you use those things because they feel, you know, it's working for you and you feel like you're saving money, you're actually doing more damage to the gum and bone underneath because it causes it to shrink quicker when you have that stuff in there. Because basically you have an ill-fitting denture and you're trying to stabilize it, but it still kind of moves around a little bit. All right. Now, another one is fact or fiction. I can assume that all of my teeth and gums are healthy as long as nothing in my mouth is sore or tender. Is that fact or is that fiction? Is that fact or is that fiction? I'm going to tell you that the prevailing feeling out there seems to be that if nothing hurts, you're fine. can't tell you how many times I've heard that when people come in, and especially when somebody comes in as a new patient, or even more so in the cases where I have taken over a retiring dentist's uh, patient uh, file, you know, and people come in that were fine, and of course they're looking at me with a leery eye because I'm the new guy, and they don't know me yet, and and they're just a little bit standoffish. And if I tell them they have an abscess or I tell them they have a cavity and yet nothing hurts, they look at me like, yep, I was right. This new guy just wants my money. But folks, I'm telling you, you, well, let's put it this way. This is a big, big uh, piece of fiction. It's a big piece of fiction. Just because you don't have soreness or tenderness doesn't mean that you are healthy. In fact, almost always you can have abscesses and cavities, deep cavities. You can have gum disease, bleeding gums. You can have all kinds of you know, terrible things happening in your mouth and not feel a thing, not have a single warning sign. So to reiterate, where it said, I can assume that all of my teeth and gums are healthy as long as nothing in my mouth is sore or tender, that is a big fat fiction. Big fat fiction. <laughs> and you're probably one of the people that uh, thought that everything's fine if nothing hurts. So why do you think we take x-rays? Because we can see decay, we can see abscesses that you're unaware of. Can't be aware of something you're unaware of, right? And think about this. Women go to have a mammogram, right? Because they want to see if they have breast cancer. No woman waits till they have pain in their breast to decide if maybe there's something wrong. And you shouldn't wait until you have pain in your mouth or pain in a tooth uh, the same way. Okay. All right, so... Let's see, looking at the time here, looks like we have time for probably one more or so. All right, fact or fiction, root canals don't work. And I've seen this in, uh, I've seen it online where people have written. I've seen a series of uh, people sharing uh, uh, social media posts, that sort of thing. I've even had patients tell me that, yeah, I had a root canal and it didn't work. And uh, so then you impugn all root canals, I guess. But that also is fiction. Also, big fiction. Root canals are awesome. They allow you to keep your own tooth for the rest of your life if you want. And when I say that, if, when, the reason I put it that way is meaning if you brush your teeth and you want to take care of them and you want them to be there, then uh, doing a root canal on a tooth that needs it is the thing to do. Root canals definitely do work. So that, that one was, a, was fiction. And when I say... When I say, you know, it's important to have the root canal, I say this a lot. If you save your tooth, and usually saving the tooth means a root canal, because by the time we're getting to the point where we're talking about uh, saving, meaning using the word save, not just fixing, well, 
if we if you have your tooth extracted and you place a bridge there or I place a bridge for you or I place an implant there for you those are great and those are great if you need them but if you don't need them they're a lot more expensive than simply saving that tooth by doing the root canal the big filling we call a crown buildup filling and the crown over top it's just uh, economically better and not only economically better but what's better than the original equipment what's better than what was God given right and so think about it we're, we're saving your God given tooth we're saving you a ton of money and uh, I can't think of a, a reason to take out a tooth that's savable um, unless, I don't know, I can't think of an unless. Yeah, I just can't think of a good one. If I can save your tooth, you should have me save it. All right, so that looks like, um, looks like that probably is taking us up to the break where we have to, well, you know, we're going to do Dr. Kovitko's question of the day right now. And so, but before we do, Oh, don't forget, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. Remember? And I'm going to give you the phone number now. Don't quite call yet, but uh, be ready. 614-459-9769. 614-459-9769. And so before we do the contest, though, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kovitko's question of the day. Okay, and the question is, today we are doing a fact or fiction episode. And so, which of the following is true? A, all denture wearers need to use adhesives to keep them in. B, it is safe to drive yourself home from a dental appointment when you were given oral sed sedatives. C, root canals don't work. Or D, none of the above is true. All right, let me say it again. A, all denture wearers need to use an adhesive to keep them in. B, it is safe to drive yourself home from a dental appointment when you were given oral sedatives. C, root canals don't work. Or D, none of the above is true. All right, the winner's going to receive free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call, 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it though. I wanna hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavico, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavico, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and road show. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Johanna and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavico and Associates today. 614-262-9588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. All right, we're back.
we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavikko's question of the day. During the break, my producer took the phone calls. Tell me who is the winner of Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Who had the correct answer, which is D, none of the above. Yeah, we had Christine calling in from Hilliard. She answered the right question. It was D, uh, none of the above. There you go, Christine. Congratulations from Hilliard. Congratulations to our winner. Thank you so much for listening and calling in. And for those of you who didn't win today, feel free to call back next week, okay? All right, so if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 620 of The Reasons We Smile. It's Fact or Fiction Part 2. I'm bringing you a fun look at dental facts and myths. Okay, so uh, we've covered about four already. Here's the next one. Okay, fact or fiction. Even though my dentist told me that I need a root canal, if my tooth isn't sore, I can just get a filling. Is that fact or is that fiction? Okay, think about it, think about it. Your tooth isn't sore. Your dentist tells you you need a root canal. Hmm. Okay, well that one, if you've been listening, actually should be obvious, but for those of you that just tuned in, it might not be. The answer is, that is fiction. If your dentist tells you you need a root canal because he or she sees a abscess or can see that the decay has reached the nerve even though it's not hitting, hurting you yet. By the way, uh, when decay reaches the nerve, um, Sometimes it hurts at first, and then it stops hurting. And so when it stops hurting, that's when the, the nerve uh, tissue actually dies because it's been insulted, and it's been inflamed for so long, it's not getting enough blood supply anymore, and it dies. So your pain goes away. Does that mean you're healed? No, it just means you don't have pain right now. But, when, but what's going to happen is now that it's completely dead and there's no blood supply, now the bacteria are going to live in there. They're going to live and breathe and give off um, toxic byproducts. And that's how an abscess forms. And once the abscess forms, as long as it doesn't have a place to drain on its own, you get swelling, uh, swelling uh, down in the bone first, then sometimes of just the gum, sometimes of your whole face. And that's where the pain comes from, is the swelling, the pressure that's being put on the surrounding nerve endings. So that is definitely fiction. If your dentist says you need a root canal and there's good tangible proof, then you need a root canal. Filling by itself just won't do it. In fact, if you put a filling in a tooth that needs a root canal, it can uh, make it worse. Because I, I tell people all the time when they ask me that question, I'll say, well, if we put a filling in this tooth, well, and remember we've said that the decay has gone into the nerve, so let's say there's a little hole into the nerve chamber. We clean out the decay. We put a filling right there and then let the numbness wear off. When the numbness wears off, you're probably going to start screaming because I've now put a filling on top of your nerve, touching the nerve. That's got to hurt like crazy, right? Okay, and it does. <laughs> so that was also fiction. Okay, here's another one. It says, uh, fact or fiction, my dentist told me that I needed root planing and keratage. By the way, folks, that's a very, very deep cleaning that is below the gum line, usually onto the root surfaces, per the name. And in my office, I typically don't do it unless the person is numb. But anyway... But you're going to say, but since nothing is hurting me right now, it's okay to just get a cleaning. Is that fact or is that fiction? Okay, think about it. Nothing hurts. He says or she says you need a, uh, a root plane and curatage, which is a super deep cleaning. And that is also fiction. Okay, a cleaning, think of this. A cleaning just cleans the teeth above the gum line and maybe just a millimeter or two below it. A dental cleaning, which we refer to as a dental prophylaxis, does not get 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 millimeters below your, your gum line. It, it just, it, well, first of all, we couldn't do it without it hurting you. And secondly, that's uh, a lot more involved, takes a lot more time. Oftentimes in my office, we use an ultrasonic scaler to do that, and um, it, you bleed. It's a pretty involved procedure. And so sometimes I think people are asking us that, or saying that to us because they don't want to... They're trying to go with the least expensive option, right? So root planing, and cura, root planing and curatage is more expensive. It's so many... It's, uh, I don't know, it's uh, two, two or three hundred dollars a quadrant, maybe? And so, yeah, it's a, it's a, but it's a procedure. It's not just cleaning your teeth. So the answer is fiction. You cannot just get a cleaning if you really need root planing and curatage. It's just not... It's not going to do the job. It's not going to do what you're there for or what you need. So I don't know. It'd be like, um, I don't know. Here's one. Uh, you, if you have a long enough fingernail to be able to get dirt behind it, if you only take out the, the top millimeter of dirt and you leave the rest in there, 
look at your fingers and there, there's dirt under every fingernail. But you had the top part cleaned out. Well, that would be like a cleaning and getting all that other dirt would be like root planting and keratage. So think about it. The dirt's touching tissue, right? Uh, in your finger, if we're using that as an example. Well, that tissue that's being, you know, has gunk caked up against it, that tissue is irritated. It doesn't like having the gunk. And yet, it's, um, if you just get the cleaning, you don't even touch that stuff. It's still there. Doesn't, so a cleaning does nothing for you other than give you the false sense that you have clean teeth when what you really have is gunk all over the, the bottom half of the crown and uh, the top half of the roots. Okay? So that one, is, um, that one we, get, we hear a lot. And I do get it, folks. I do get it that people are, are always looking to save money. And certainly nobody wants to pay for something they don't need. But I can promise you, if you need root planning and curatage, it's not something you don't need. It's something you absolutely need if you want to keep your teeth. And if you, you, know, if you definitely want to keep them for a lifetime. But uh, sometimes it doesn't take a lifetime to lose teeth if you don't get the root planning when you need it. By the time you need root planning, you're probably close to us having to say, you know what, we can't save that tooth, we can't save this tooth, and so on. All right, I think it's time for us to go to another break. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode number 620, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, not just a little bit. I don't know who to be. I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, because you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kawiko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Weigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> All right, we're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko, and this is episode 620 of The Reasons We Smile, a fun look at dental myths and facts. Okay, next up is this. Fact or fiction? Calcium is taken from your teeth if you don't get enough vitamin D. All right, calcium is taken from your teeth if you don't get enough vitamin D. Is that fact or is that fiction? Hmm, so think about it a little bit. Let's see, we know that milk has vitamin D, right? Milk has uh, is good for our bones and teeth, and... Calcium is in milk, and so maybe people would assume then that if you don't have enough calcium, well, maybe the body's going to take it from your teeth, right? Okay, so this one is, it's weird, this one is true and false, okay? I know, how can that be, right? How can that fact and fiction? If your body needs calcium, it's going to take it from your bones first. So it's going to leave your teeth intact. That's not the first thing that goes. The first thing that's going to happen is you're going to get brittle bone disease, also known as rickets. So a severe vitamin D deficiency is going to cause rickets or, or a, a brittle bone disease, and that's going to happen before you ever lose a speck of calcium from your teeth. So the answer is fact and fiction. Does that make sense? It will eventually take it from your teeth, but by that time you're pretty darn sick, and that's the least of your concerns. Okay, so this next one, and it might be the last one of the day, I'm not sure, we'll have to see on time, but this next one is fact or fiction. I don't like having dental x-rays taken, so it's okay to tell my dentist to just use the ones from three years ago, okay, which presumably were taken at another office, or I guess maybe we took them three years ago. So what do you think about that? Is that fact or is that fiction, that it's okay to skip dental x-rays for any reason, for that matter? Of course, this one is because you don't want them, and I assume when people don't want them, there are two reasons. One would be cost. They're trying to save money. Two would be they're trying to prevent receiving any more radiation than is necessary. 
And so, but is it fact or fiction that it's okay to skip them? The answer is it's fiction. It's fiction, fiction, fiction. Okay, think about it. The x-rays that were taken three years ago show us what? They show us what was happening three years ago. You can't buy a house without a termite report that is current. No mortgage lender is going to let you buy a house with a three-year-old termite report. They won't even let you buy one with a one-year-old termite report or a six-month-old termite report. And those of you in banking, you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so all a, an old x-ray does is tell us what, was, what used to be, what was happening last year, three years ago, four years. And this is uh, kind of a bugaboo of mine because some dental insurance companies have gone to only paying for dental x-rays every five years. Oh my goodness, five years? Look at a photograph of yourself from five years ago. What'd you look like? Did you look anything like you do now? <laughs> you probably look a little bit like that, but maybe a few more wrinkles, maybe a few more gray hairs, maybe whatever, right? And so, yeah, uh, skipping x-rays for any reason is a bad idea. Skipping them for cost is a really bad idea. Why? Because the x-ray might, let's say a whole set of x-rays, even if it costs 130 bucks. Well, one filling is 230 bucks. So if we can save you from having to have another filling that you wouldn't have needed by catching something when it's small, well, we've saved you money. So it's always cheaper to have the dental x-rays when you need them or when your doctor says you need them than it is to, quote, save the money and do them next time or do them next time and next time. I'll have to tell you that I've had several patients who were telling us next time and next time. And I try to be real cordial and I try to be pleasant as possible with my patients. But at some point, and I've had this happen on, oh gee, um, maybe a half dozen people, at some point I have to sit people down and I say, look, if I'm going to be your dentist, I need to be able to do my job. And for me to charge you money for an exam and not be able to see an x-ray isn't fair to you, it's not fair to me. And so I'm not sure why you're resisting having these x-rays, and, and, and I'd love to have a conversation to find out. But if you're not going to let me take x-rays, then I need you to go somewhere else. I just can't be your dentist. Now, I'm happy to report that in each instance when I uh, said that, the people came around and they said, okay, okay, I get it. I didn't realize. I w and in the one woman's case, she was so afraid of the um, radiation that what we did for her to make her comfortable was we put four different lead aprons on her. We had one behind her. We had one in front of her. We had uh, two that were sideways. And we completely encased her in lead aprons. And that did it. And that's all we needed to do. So in some cases, it's just a matter of us having the conversation and making sure that we've made the person comfortable. I think it's easy to talk about being comfortable about the money end of things. But when it comes to the radiation, that's a little bit of a harder sell because people have ingrained thoughts about the safety and that and that sort of thing. I taught for 20 years at the College of Dentistry, Ohio State University's College of Dentistry in the radiology department, so I feel really qualified to uh, talk to folks about radiation equivalents and that sort of thing because that's what I used to teach. So anyway, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really important, folks, and uh, please get your x-rays. Please don't ask us to use them that are three, four, five, six, seven years old. It's just not good. Okay, well, I think that's all the time we have, yeah. So let me end by saying, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. And visit my office Facebook page and like us. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week.